Let's meet the cast of Black Lightning. First off, Christy Adams, you know her from Girl with the Dried Up Dragon Tattoo and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Christine Adams. You know her from Twin Peaks. <laughs> you know her from Twin Peaks and Girl Black. Navisa Williams. You know her from Descendants 2, China Ann McClay. from Girlfriends and Being Mary Jane, Salim Akil and Mara Brock Akil. And you're going to know him as Jefferson Pierce, our hero, Black Lightning, Cress Williams. That's right, show him some love. Now, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to get right to it. Um, by my count, now I'm kind of old, my memory's fading, but it has been a minute since we have seen a primetime network TV show feature a black superhero. Anybody remember Mantis? Oh, <laughs> so, I wanted to ask our, produce, our producers especially, uh, why Black Lightning and what does it mean to bring a character of color to the superhero TV world that we have now? Wow, can you guys, yes, you can. I start you out with easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why Black Lightning? Uh, because I think it's time. I think um, Jefferson Pierce is the epitome of what uh, black men are. He is a man that is in love with his wife. He loves his children. He loves his community. Um, so these, you know, this family is like the, the Obamas of the superhero world. So we like that. I think, I, think, I think the thing that makes it so timely is that, you know, when we look on the news and we see that there's 125 shootings in Chicago over a 4th of July weekend, there are no superheroes going in that neighborhood trying to save people. Well, Black Lightning is going to go do that. So I think that that's why we need him. That's why. Tell us what it's like to play a character like Jefferson Pierce who is operating in a world, you know, we're used to seeing these superheroes at 30,000 feet, yeah. you know, saving the world, but yeah. this is a cat who's trying to save his neighborhood, right? Exactly, I mean, it's, it's uh, phenomenal for me. I mean, he, uh, you know, like Salim said, you know, uh, he's going into the community, and I think that we, we, um, we affect change um, positively, kind of from the inward out, so he starts from family to his community, and then that affects outward. Um, usually we see heroes who are just trying to save the world, but he's trying to save the world um, one person at a time. Now, uh, before we go too far, we have promised some special news, some, a revelation about the cast. <laughs> so, Celine, can you tell us who's joining the cast that folks are just going to find out here at Comic-Con? <laughs> um, you, you guys know the character of Gamby, right, in the Black Lightning Uh-oh. Well, we got James Remar to play that character. Do you guys know who he is? Clap, yep. 48 hours. Yep, right. Yeah. Dexter. And, uh, Sex in the City. Yep. And <laughs> the first do you guys uh, remember the character <laughs> Inspector Henderson? Yeah, from the comic, Inspector Henderson is going to be Damon Gupton, who is amazing, just an amazing actor. So we're super excited about bringing them along. And, the next uh, announcements are going to be even more exciting. So it's just getting better and better. You know, that's the way we do. <laughs> it's, like, it's like chocolate, no pun intended. <laughs> like excellent. <laughs> now, it's interesting to me because uh, the comic book, movie, and TV world have taken a lot of flack for not being diverse. Um, and some of us have been crying out for a while to see something like this, a TV show that's centered on black folks. So can you talk a little bit about the responsibility of doing that? And what can you bring to the screen that maybe we wouldn't see uh, or we haven't seen in these characters that, uh, that aren't people of color? I think it's a celebration, A, of our culture that is a part of being an American. That through our lens, through our scope, through our pain, joy, struggle, triumphs, we can see that we really are all connected. I think, in, but it's through that celebration of the specific of who we are to connect to the universal of who we are. Um, I also think that we bring, um, I just had a, 
I just had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> right as well. You were going to say the moderator is a very handsome person. I was like, very <laughs> handsome. <laughs> I just want to speak to that point a little bit about the diversity and I think you know yes of course we are a black family but I do think our stories and, and what we're going to talk about and what we're going to explore transcend that and I think it's sort of beyond colour I think it's great that we're there but I think it's actually beside the fact that we're black and I think it's more about universal things that we're all going to relate to and we're all going to connect with that, that's what I'm hoping I mean it doesn't become yeah. that colour it becomes about us as human beings I, I, this was, it's come back. <laughs> Sorry, I'll call. I think by, by have Black Lightning and eventually Thunder and Lightning helping to save the community, we get to shade in the humanity of those who need that help in our communities. And we also get to shade in the reason why some of our bad guys are bad. It's not that they, it's like a choice. We all have a choice. We can use our power for good or we can use our power for bad. And some of it's circumstantial, what's happening in our neighborhoods. And I think it gives, that's an opportunity and that's that responsibility that we can add from our perspective about what's happening in our world, real world today, and maybe inspire change within the viewers and within ourselves. Yeah, that's interesting because when I see TV shows, network TV shows, try to tackle a crime, for example. They're afraid to show black criminals, yeah. but when you look at the south side of Chicago and the gang violence, it, you know, it involves the black community. And so how do, can you show those problems if you don't show who is suffering and who's also a, a part of it? And what's so interesting about being Mary Jane and Girlfriends is you guys have really captured black culture, right? But now you got a superhero show. Yes. So what's the, tell me about the challenge of doing that. I mean, we know you, you got black culture, but now you got to do the superhero thing too. The I, biggest challenge was accepting that this black man was running around town in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the easiest way to get shot by the police. <laughs> you dress up in some weird suit and start running around trying up. to save people. <laughs> Pow! Shoot at me, please! <laughs> are, are you saying Black Lightning Lives Matter? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. 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 I, um, That's a hashtag. I, That's I, a think, um, I think for us, it, you know, we have been so character-based and we will continue to be character-based. Mm -hmm. I think for, it is about balancing out uh, when this man uses his powers, how he uses his powers, and why. Um, I think that those are that was the toughest thing because we really want people to get to know this family and their powers like their race is just a part of who they are like the most interesting thing about this family is not that they're african-american you know i don't walk around thinking oh i'm walking around i'm sexy i'm an african-american you know I, I walk around just thinking damn i gotta pay these bills and i gotta get this job done right so I think that the challenge is not giving in to the idea that we need to be perfect. And to your point about uh, exhibiting the problems of these communities in, in truth, um, yes, there is definitely a problem with police brutality. And we will get into that. But there is also a huge problem with us killing each other. And we don't mind Thank you. addressing that. Thank you. So now, uh, Steve, Nafisa, and China, I'd like you guys to tell uh, the crowd about your characters too. Uh, can you talk a little bit about who you're playing and, and, and how you're approaching the role? Hi. So I play Anissa Pierce, the older daughter of Jefferson and Lynn. And um, she's just very powerful in her own right. And she does aspire to follow in her father's footsteps. But again, she, she wants her own path and she wants to do it her own way. And she's just a force. She's fearless. She knows what she wants. She's ready to fight for the injustice that's going on within the community. She's also protective over her little sister. And, um, you know, just a part of that family dynamic that we have. Yes, um, and I play Jennifer Pierce, the youngest daughter of Jefferson Pierce, AKA Black Lightning. And I love the fact that at the start, it just starts out with her being a teenager and struggling with that. She doesn't have superpowers yet. She's just struggling with finding herself. And um, that's where she is at the start. And then you see her develop superpowers and where that takes her character and the character arc that she has to go through. And it's very, very complex and very interesting for both of our characters, Lisa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I play Lynn Pierce, ex-wife of Black Lightning, mother to these two incredible daughters. <clears throat> I don't have superpowers in the traditional sense, apart from love and kindness. Um, <laughs> Which is the fabulousness. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, in, in, a, in a way, I'm kind of the glue that holds the family together and, and keeps them grounded. And I'm, I'm sure we'll have to navigate this really complicated terrain of having young women going out into the world and, you know, trying to shape them and mold them with this extra layer of having these powers and, and how, they, how they nurture it and how they cultivate it. So If I can underscore their roles, I just think what's exciting to to me is that the as superheroes we always need support and so you have to the struggle between and, and certainly black lightning's character is accepting one's power but the who is the support underneath it and he's got these two daughters that are from his lineage from his blood who embody and, and, and exhibit their own power and so Anissa is going to be thunder and his daughter Jennifer is going to be lightning and as Christine talked about the glue for Lynn, sometimes our role and that one thing that we can all think about is how are we supporting and for, how are we supporting each other in, through love? And so I, we're really very excited about the, um, those elements of those characters. Uh, my question is for Chris. Um, as a superhero, I just wanted to, hey, I just wanted to ask um, what was the most scary like, stunt or thing as a superhero you had to maybe do and when we was the most? <laughs> well, it's actually kind of the same thing. The, the most scary was, uh, I was on a wire up on this building um, and had to just step off the building. Um, not jump off the building, or, but like look cool stepping off the building, like you know, <laughs> stepping off a curb. Um, and so initially, I mean, that's something you got to get used to, you know, and, and it's hard to like kind of look cool doing it. But, <laughs> But by the end of it, it felt like a ride. Like by the end, of it, once I got used to it, it was just like, yeah, let's do that again. Let's do it again. Let's go. Um, yeah, that was it. So what he's saying is, write more scenes where he has to jump off a building. Yeah. Okay. Step off. Of course. <laughs> I want Next to fly. Question. That's what I want to do. I want to fly. Oh, that's okay. I, I'm being told we don't have time to take another Aww. question. But we, I'm, I see that we have a minute here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask one more question. Okay. What the hell? Take that time. Take that space. There are a lot of, of great uh, black superheroes in the in the DC universe. Um, was there a particular reason why Black Lightning was the one uh, that made sense to make into a series right now? Yeah. Uh, just the groundedness in the character of Jefferson. It uh, touched on so many things that were interesting to me. Again, a father, I'm a father. Uh, he has a wife, I have a wife. Uh, he grew up in an area that was uh, dangerous, so did I. So I just identified so much with the character that it made sense for me. What, I, I think, you know, one of the most popular albums right now is Jay-Z's uh, album. And I think the reason people really like that album is because it comes from an authentic black male voice and it's describing what he feels like as a man, a father, and an artist. I think the thing that is going to make this so much fun for myself and the other writers is that this is going to come from an authentic black male voice and there's no filter and I'm not afraid to talk about the things that we need to talk about. And I think that that's what will set this show apart from any other. I love all of the other shows, and they have paved a way for this show. Yeah. But I think this character is going to add something to the conversation. We're able to give something back to the culture. And when I say culture, I mean black culture, but I also mean... <laughs> I like black people, too. <laughs> There's my blurs. There's oh my blurs. My but I, I also okay. think we're going to be giving something back to the American culture. When I was a kid growing up, I dressed up like Batman. Batman doesn't look like me, but I accepted him because he was a hero. What I expect by this time next year, what I expect by the time we get to um, Halloween, what I love is the idea that I will be able, along with all of these amazing artists, is to see little black boys and little black girls have a choice. They can either be black Batman or they can be black lightning. They can be Supergirl or they can be Thunder or Lightning. To me, 
that is what this is all about, giving opportunity for other people to see this. Well, the fact, and I want to thank you, Celine, because you've given me an option for Cosplay Beyond Nick Fury. So thank you very much. <laughs>